folks and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to show you my attempt to capture the Tadpoles Nebula which is a beautiful winter sky object from my rooftop in the city center using my own astrophotography gear. And to make things a little bit more interesting I'm going to compare my results to remote imaging data of that same object taken under truly dark skies with a high-end astrophotography setup. I'm Wido Ullemans and you're watching Wido's Astroform. This actually all started out as my attempt to photograph this object in the Netherlands under dark skies. I spent some days with my family on Ameland, which is one of the islands in the north of the Netherlands and one of the few places left in my country with truly dark skies. Unfortunately, we didn't have any clear skies during my stay, so we went on to do some other fun things instead. So of course, as soon as we left the islands and my kids were back at school, skies cleared up in the Netherlands. <laughs> Just my luck. But anyway, we ended up having a great time over there. And for my Dutch viewers, I strongly recommend visiting one of the Bodden Eilanden or the Frisian Islands as they are called in English, as they are among the last places in our country with truly dark skies. Anyway, let's continue the video. The Tadpoles Nebula is a lesser well-known winter sky object as most astrophotographers gaze at the Orion, the Horsehead, the Flame and the Rosette Nebula. But after a decade of astrophotography, you come to the conclusion that there are many less well-known objects that are definitely worth photographing like the Tadpoles Nebula in the constellation Auriga. Auriga is a bit higher in the winter sky as compared to objects in the constellation Orion, which means less atmosphere to deal with if you're in the northern hemisphere like me. The Tadpoles is about 12 and a half thousand light years away and is 100 light years across. It's part of a larger star forming region that's also home to the nearby flaming star Nebula. If you followed me on my YouTube channel, you probably noticed that I've fallen for the ZWO ecosystem with this particular astrophotography rig. Don't worry though, galaxy season is about to start and I will need a larger telescope like my Celestron Edge HD for that, so stay tuned. This particular rig consists of my FF80 telescope and lightweight AM5 mount on a carbon tripod. This gear is light enough for me to put it on my rooftop and hook it up to a battery without breaking my back. On my rooftop I don't have any buildings or tree blocking my view of the night sky, but I do have to worry about the chimney of my neighbor who still loves his good old fireplace. The FF80 is a flat field telescope so I don't have to worry about back focus which saves me some headaches. I added the extra electronic autofocuser and the new CAA rotator, all of which are controlled by the ASI Air Plus, which I connect to my home Wi-Fi network. Tadpoles is an emission nebula, so I ended up using my ASI 2600mm Pro monochrome camera with HA, S2 and O3 narrowband filters to capture the nebula while blocking the nasty light pollution from my city.
pollution. Right, let's get to work. Right, folks, so I captured about nine hours of imaging data from my rooftop using my narrowband filters and I processed my picture in PixInsight in the Hubble palette. Now, as promised, I also processed the picture of the Tadpoles Nebula using remote data from a dark sky site in southern Spain and that data comes from a service called Telescope Live. Now, the total integration time of that picture is very similar. It's also about 10 hours, but the astrophotography setup used is very high end. So the telescope used was a Takahashi FSQ 106 mm and the camera used was a whopping 61 megapixel QHY 600 monochrome camera with some very high end Astrodon filters. And because that camera sensor is about three times larger than the camera I used, it did not just capture the Tadpoles Nebula, but also the Flaming Star Nebula that's right next to the Tadpoles. All right, time for the big reveal. Many things have changed since I started astrophotography about 10 years ago. With the option to perform remote astrophotography and the many data sharing websites, I sometimes wonder why I'm still pursuing this hobby from my rooftop under murky light polluted city skies. For me, there's something special about setting up my own astrophotography gear and the anticipation of a clear night. I still get that sense of excitement when that first sharp image of an object appears live on my screen and I just know that object is out there, right above my rooftop. Combating challenges like city light pollution, solving technical problems, or even smoke from my neighbor's chimney make that final picture feel all the more rewarding. For me, astrophotography isn't just about the picture. It's also about the experience and the problem-solving journey. <laughs> 